Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Fallout 4 is a game with quite a plethora of weapons, armors, and other items for your character to obtain and use however you please. Some weapons and armor sets are rather rare, with only a handful of duplicates existing throughout the world that require you to go through great lengths in order to acquire them. Others, not so much. However, there are a few items that exist within the game that are not actually obtainable by the player at all, without the use of console commands. Some of these items can only be used by specific NPCs. Others on this list don't even make an appearance in the base game at all, being either cut content or items specifically made for the developers to mess around with. Regardless of why, today we'll be taking a look at five unobtainable items in Fallout 4. Starting off, we have the Volt 101 suit. Anyone who's played Fallout 3 won't need me to explain why this is so strange, but buried away in the game's files, there is a fully functional and well-fleshed-out suit from the classical Volt featured in Fallout 3. To be fair, technically there's even two suits. There's both a new Volt 101 suit variant that looks crisp and clean, as well as an old suit variant that has a noticeable level of wear and tear. In case you need some history, Vault 101 was the vault your character escaped from at the beginning of Fallout 3. It's located all the way in the Capital Wasteland, or Washington, D.C., and is not even so much as referenced in Fallout 4. Needless to say, this is not an item you can find any NPCs wearing, nor encounter throughout the world. It simply exists within Fallout 4's files and can be spawned through the console, but makes no appearance. Volt suits offer the same stats as all other normal Volt suits found in game, with 10 rad protection, 1 carry weight, and will sell for 20 caps. Next, we have the Beaded Blazer. This unacquirable piece of clothing will go for 5 caps and weigh you down by 2 points should you spawn it in. It is only present in game being worn by the elderly, and evidently psychic, Mama Murphy character. However, Mama Murphy is marked as an essential NPC, so you can't kill her to steal from her inventory. And if you do somehow decide to remove her essential NPC status from the game through the use of console commands, and then kill her, unlike other NPCs, her clothes still won't appear in her inventory. In fact, the Beaded Blazer has a trait that makes it invisible across all inventories. This means if you ever want to put the costume on, you'll need to force equip it. The Beaded Blazer is more than just a suit though. It's an entire one-piece outfit that takes up all of your clothing slots, as it comes with a unique head wrap and earrings, meaning you can't be wearing any additional helmets or armor pieces when this item is equipped. If I'm being honest, I think it looks rather cool. Certainly not practical considering its non-existent damage resistance, but cool. Coming at number three is a weapon called the Nuke, and its name foreshadows its capabilities. The Nuke bears the same model as the Broadsider, a unique weapon based off of a cannon earned after completing the quest, The Last Voyage of the USS Constitution. The Broadsider and the Nuke are identical in both appearance and reload animation. However, that's where the similarities begin to end. In fact, the nuke seems to be more closely related to the Fat Man than its cannon-like cousin. You see, while the Broadsider uses an ammo called Cannonballs and does about 108 damage a shot, the nuke, on the other hand, has its own ammo type, also simply called Nuke as well, and does a whopping 500 plus damage every round. As you might expect, the nuke also appears to deal considerably larger amounts of splash damage to enemies, as it fires out what are more or less actual explosives, and the broadsider shoots cannonballs that are meant to act as projectiles. You can notice a very visible difference in just the appearance of projectile that these two guns are firing out. With the nuke shooting a dramatically oversized ammunition that looks like the capsule you would find on a real nuclear missile, and the broadsider expelling ammo that essentially resembles actual cannonballs. It is unlikely that the nuke weapon was ever meant to reach player hands. If it did, it would easily be among the most powerful weapons in the game, considering its obscene damage. In my opinion, this was probably used by developers as a means of quickly dispatching large groups of enemies when working on levels without needing to spend minutes in the console. It could have also been used as a base to test types of projectiles used by other guns that never made the cut. Regardless, if you're interested in getting your hands on this weapon, you'll need to spawn it in via console, as it's not carried by any NPCs, nor will you ever come across it in normal gameplay. Fourth, there is Lorenzo's Crown. This piece of headgear is worn by Lorenzo Cabot, the main antagonist of the side quest, The Secret of the Cabot House. In that quest, you find out that Lorenzo has been alive since well before the Great War, and all these years he survived thanks to this wonderful hat he discovered when on an archaeological dig in the Middle East. The crown is said to offer its wearer enhanced strength, endurance, and obviously immortality as well. His son Jack had Lorenzo locked away in Parsons State Insane Asylum, as he believed the crown was changing his father for the worse, and he couldn't get it off of him. The quest revolves around this conflict. Lorenzo wants to escape his confines, and his son wants to keep him there. Well, at the end of it all, you're given the option to either kill Lorenzo or his son. Now, if you're like me, you chose to kill Lorenzo for his cool helmet. 
However, if you went that route and shared in my motivations, chances are you were very disappointed. This is because Lorenzo's crown, like Mama Murphy's beaded blazer, does not appear in inventories, so killing Lorenzo will not enable you to take his crown off for yourself. This means you must force equip it through the console if you ever want to put it on. The crown has a weight value of just 3, and offers no additional damage or radiation protections. Thankfully, unlike the beaded blazer, Lorenzo's crown only occupies your primary headgear slot, and can be worn alongside bandanas and other chest apparel. Personally, when I first tried this on, I really disliked the way it looked, but after a while, it's starting to grow on me. And finally, to wrap this list up, we have a piece of cut content. Elder Maxon's Cape. Some of you who have seen Fallout 4's concept art may already know where I'm going with this one. But originally, Bethesda intended to give the Brotherhood of Steel faction leader, Elder Maxon, a cape. It would be made of a worn red cloth, and instead of his usual attire, he would be wearing this over a slightly modified orange Brotherhood of Steel uniform. To be honest, it all looks a little bit rugged and tacky for such an advanced faction, and I'm glad Bethesda decided to ditch this outfit for the much more appropriate jacket that he rocks in the release version of the game. It appears as though Bethesda meant for the cape to just occupy the ring slot of the player's inventory, so you could wear it with most other pieces of attire. However, a bit of playing around with this item will reveal some tremendous clipping and physics issues, which is probably at least part of the reason why Bethesda never bothered with capes in the first place. Of course, like everything else on this list, if you are interested in seeing what was essentially Elder Maxon's superhero costume, console commands will be your best friend. Anyway, that about does it for us today. Which of these items did you find to be the most interesting? Leave a comment down below. Personally, I thought the beaded blazer and Volt 101 suits were the coolest. The beaded blazer just looked pretty badass, and the Volt 101 suits were pretty fascinating considering the context. If you enjoyed this video, a like rating is, as always, very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by, everybody, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.